Here's a really nice uh, real-world problem for trigonometry. In physics lab, a student collected the data in the table below on the height of a weight on a spring attached to a ceiling. There's the data. Now, it says for A, to plot the data in your calculating using STAT and create a scatter plot. And show this to your instructor. Now, this was on the exam. I'd have, it, have my students show this to me. But um, when you do your calculator, you just have to go to the STAT. Let me move this so you can see both things. You go to your STAT key, which is down here. You hit Edit. And in list one, you put the first row. And in list two, you put the second row. It doesn't look like it's focusing very well, but there it is. Then you go to your y equals and make sure that everything's empty. Make sure your first plot is highlighted. Now, if you're not sure that that is going to give you a scatter plot because you've been messing around with it, you go to the stat plot, second stat plot, hit plot one, make sure you turn it on, and this first guy is highlighted for the scatter plot. Make sure your x list is list one, your y list is list two because that's how you entered it in. Now, if you want to plot it, make sure your window is right. Notice that my x goes from 0 to 0.5, so this goes from 0 to 0.5. This is uh, has a low value of 6.96 and a high value of 8.69. So I, I like to see the axis, so I always start at 0 or have 0 in my y, min, and max. But I'm going to go with maximum of 9, which is just greater than this. Now you should be able just to graph it, and there's your plot. There's your data plot. Now it looks like, I mean if you really think about it, this looks like a, a negative cosine function that where the high point is somewhere in the middle here between these two. And then it comes down a little bit. We don't know how high that is. And we don't want to extrapolate or guess too much. So I'm just going to use the highest point and the lowest point to find the amplitude in the midline. And then we'll talk about the horizontal shift and how I think about that and uh, go from there. So since we have to use a sine function, that's why we have to have a horizontal shift because, again, this does look like negative cosine to me. But let's find the stuff that we already know how to find. Let's find the amplitude, which we take the highest point, subtract the lowest point, and divide by 2. And that gives me 0 0.865. To get the midline, you take the low point and add the amplitude, or you take the high point and subtract the amplitude. Either way, it works. And the midline is 7.825. Well, that's where the midline is. The midline itself is y equals 7.825. It's actually an equation of a line, horizontal one, as a matter of fact. My period is given to me from, I start here and end here, and I'm assuming that's one period. We don't have any other data, so this is it. So my period goes from 0 to 0 0.5 with a length of 0.5, and then we use this data to get our A, B, and C, or A, B, and D in this case. So A is going to be 0 0.865. Now why did I choose a positive A? Because I keep saying negative cosine. Well, first of all, we're, we have to use a sine function. If we look at this data, my sine function starts about at the midline, which is where this point is, and it's going to go up and down. Remember, sine starts at the midline, goes up and, and down in its particular wave. Okay, So I know that my sine, my amplitude, will be positive, or my A value. My D value is my midline, 7.825. And my B value always turns out to be 2 pi over the period. And if you simplify this properly, that's 2 pi over 1 half, which simplifies to 4 pi. That's not my period. That's the value for B. Now, if I want to come up with my horizontal shift, I always go back to what the original sine and cosine graph looks like. Now, remember, our original cosine graph is negative cosine. So this is how I think about it. And I'll do this part in pencil so I, I can sketch a little better. So I'm just going to draw a typical minus cosine graph as carefully as I can. So here's minus 1 and 1. And every minus cosine, just the basic one, starts at minus 1, ends with this period at 2 pi at minus 1. And its behavior pattern divides up the period in four pieces. So this is going to go up. 
it's going to go to its highest point in the next quarter. It's going to go back down to the axis in the next quarter. And it's going to go down to the axis in the next quarter. Now, uh, a sine wave over that same interval, let me get a different color here. A sine wave over the same interval is going to divide up the period of 2 pi into 4s as well, but it's going to move in a different way. It's going to start at the midline and then go up to the high point. It's going to go down to the next quarter to the axis again, and it's going to go down to the bottom of the amplitude down here, and then it's going to go back up. So there's a typical sine wave over the period from 0 to 2 pi. Now if I take my green graph and I shift it over this far, I will have the same graph as the original minus cosine. Now how far have I shifted it? I've shifted it exactly one quarter of the period. I've shifted one quarter of the period. Okay. So then when I think about this up here, I think, okay, I want to take my graph, let's go back to this guy, and I want to shift my sine wave that would be here one quarter of the period. <laughs> Just shut off. So I can think of one quarter of the period, it gives me one eighth. So that means that I'm going to be shifting it one eighth over. Instead of 0.1, it's 0.125. So one quarter of my period is 0 0.125. So I'm shifting it. This distance is going to be 0 0.125 in my problem. Okay, now bear with me. But that's not going to help me with my B value. My B value is 4 pi. So I just want to change, the, take a quarter of that. If I'm taking a quarter of my period to move it, then I have to take a quarter of this to move it. So that means my horizontal shift is going to be one quarter of four pi, which turns out to be just pi. So there's my horizontal shift right there. So if I want to build my final equation, let's see, it's going to be y equals 0 0.865 sine my b value 4 pi and um, t minus my horizontal shift in parentheses remember plus 7.825 I'm running out of room there 7.825 so there's my a my b my horizontal shift and d Horizontal shift is actually C over B, but we're not going to worry about that right now. I just know that it needs to go there. All right, if I multiply this, remember, if I multiply the period by one quarter, I have to multiply B by one quarter to get the right value for my equation. All right, now let's see if this works. Crossing fingers, right? So let's turn this on. Let's move this up a little bit. So I equals 0.865 sine of 4 pi x minus pi plus 7.825. Let's see how that works with our data graph. It seems to go through all the data points rather nicely, actually, except this one. And that's probably because I didn't choose the highest point. I knew it was somewhere in between here. and uh, But otherwise, it looks really good going through the data.